Are we? We're in Gretna Green. Gonna get married again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you are here. So it's got the Gretna Green story. Courtship maze. Where's that? Hope we lose each other, probably. <laughs> <laughs> A wee big shop. Historic ma marriage houses number two was up top. It's just uh, still in the corner Gretna there. Green. Gretna Green story. Called. Oh, there's the bees there. Right, blacksmith's restaurant, observatory. The wee big shop. Yeah, wee big shop. So this. Gretna Green since 1754. Welcome to Gretna Green. My family's been part of this historic village since. 1886, just over 100 years after the runaway weddings began in 1754. Yes, well, uh, people would elope to Gretna Green over the border here to get married. Uh, England banned couples under 21 from marrying without parental permission. Love struck runaways raced north to cross the border of Scotland to get wed over the anvil inside our famous blacksmith shop. In the 18th century, eloping couples risked life and limb to escape furious parents and find wedded bliss at Gretna Green. Love a statue in the middle there. Eh? <laughs> That's the wedding night after all, isn't it? Neither had the notion that the big dance had just begun. Big pair of clasped hands, I suppose, for the signify the wedding, I assume. The big dance. <laughs> so we're struck again with things being closed when we visit, or randomly, because it's... Uh, the it's closed on Saturdays because of weddings. Yeah, Grant the Green story Maybe. shut today, as you say. Could be every Saturday because of weddings, I don't know, but there is a wedding going on today. So we can't go in the Gretna story. Never mind. <laughs> oh, well, bucket of fudge. Can you ring? What's the chunky one? Yeah, it's quite fat, isn't it? Famous blacksmith shop. Pencils. Tea towels. Sea fudge. Yeah, that's cool. Iron yeah. brew bonbons. It's one. It's one. Yeah. Which one is she facing? That way, that way. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, you want me to take a picture, dear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere around here. Oh. Sorry, that. It's a statue. So. Mm. Well, these are green with the, yeah. I can't say magnets. Got the anvil. Yeah. Got the green anvil. Blacksmith and gift shops over there, and they've got love padlocks over here. And I think the, the maze is down here as well. Let's go and take a look. Oh, the padlocks are on a f frame, spelling out the word love. And around here is the courtship maze. Won't go in there now. Thistle, it's for Scotland. So back in the car now. Yes, is that? Head just back over the border and head due east now. Over to the, we're in the north, being northwest of England, now we go over to the northeast. See you in a bit.
We're over here now, over the northeast of the country. The Angel of the North. It's one of those structures that's definitely more impressive in the flesh, so to speak, rather than seeing it on pictures and on film. I say it's really more impressive seeing it. Seeing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I did think it was uh, quite horrible when I first saw it, actually, on the news all those years ago. But no, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's huge! <laughs> <laughs> oh, people leave flowers and remembrances of people they've lost. Oh, it's a nice touch, sad, but nice touch. Wikipedia says the Angel of the North is a contemporary sculpture designed by Anthony Gormley, completed in 1998 as the largest sculpture in Britain. The work faced considerable opposition during its design and construction phases, but is now widely recognised as an iconic example of public art and as a symbol of Gateshead and of the wider North East. In 2021, efforts by the 20th Century Society to obtain listed building status for the structure were unsuccessful. It's probably just a matter of time, though. What's a matter of time? That it gets listed building status. Shit. What's is that? What is this? It's, um, it's like a memorial garden. Yeah, it's, it, it, they've left it for people who have died, if a mother, oh. daughter, and. Because of the angel, yes. It's, uh, the Angel of the North, Anthony Gormley, 1998. Yeah, I remember, do remember as well when they sort of first unveiled it. Yeah, I think everybody thought it was a bit. Uh, well, yeah, everybody saw what on earth is that. Ugly, but uh, I don't it's know. No, I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, now it's been a, a while. It's sort of. This bit is part of the landscape, but it is one of those things you've got to stop and take a look at. So what's the depth on it? What's it say? Angel facts. Angel facts. It's 65 feet high, the yes. height of four double decker buses, with a wingspan of 54 meters, almost the width of a jumbo jet. It can withstand winds of one, over 100 miles per hour. I want to know how deep that is. What's it say? What does it say? Oh, to oh. withstand the wind. 33 metres. Holes were drilled. 33 metres through the soil and rock. Enabling the coal seams below the site to be grouted with sand and cement. Why an angel? Because no one has ever seen one and we need to keep imagining them. <laughs> See? Angels. Yeah. Three functions. Historic. To remind us that below that site coal mine workers in the dark for 200 years. Oh dear. Secondly, to grasp hold of the future expressing our transition from the industrial to the information age. And lastly, to be a focus for our hopes and fears. Anthony Gormley, sculptor. Yeah, yeah it has to be an angel. It's awesome. Okay, it's too big. Yeah. You go back up a bit. Yeah, yeah she is. So that's a visit to Angel of the North. So we've gone from from Gretna, North well, Scotland. Yeah. In back into North West England and across the Hexham Road. To Gateshead. And Angel of the North. Awesome. <laughs>